The last section of Chapter 6 is on redox reactions and metabolism. If you remember from Chemistry 1 that an oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction is when we have a loss and gain of electrons. So oxidation is the loss, reduction is the gain of electrons. Electrons are negative, so you gain negatives, and it's actually a reduction. An example is when oxygen combines with magnesium, oxygen gains electrons and is reduced, magnesium loses electrons and is oxidized. Term oxidation is used even if we don't involve oxygen, so don't let that um, confuse you when it comes to this because it doesn't have to involve oxygen in order for it to be a redox reaction. Here's an example of sodium ion and chlorine ion forming the compound sodium chloride. Sodium gets oxidized by losing electrons. Chlorine is reduced by gaining electrons. Oxidation reduction also applies to covalent reactions that involve hydrogen atoms. So oxidation is the loss of hydrogen atoms because that's the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of hydrogen atoms, which is the gain of electrons. In photosynthesis, this is the general reaction. That's just part of the um, bullet, so please don't think it's negative energy there. But it's energy, which comes from the sunlight, combined with carbon dioxide and water to form glucose, which is sugar, and gives off oxygen as well, which we take in for respiration. Hydrogen atoms are transferred from water to carbon dioxide, and glucose is formed. Energy is required, and this comes in the form of light energy from the sun. Chloroplasts are what convert the solar energy to ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, and it's used along with hydrogen to reduce carbon dioxide to glucose. So carbon dioxide is reduced and glucose is our product. When we look at cellular respiration, cellular respiration will happen in everything that's alive. So it doesn't matter if you photosynthesize or not. This happens inside our cells as well as plant cells. Again, this is not a minus sign, it's a bullet. So if this is where we take glucose or sugar and we um, combine it with oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide and water and energy. Glucose is what gets oxidized because the hydrogen atoms are lost. Oxygen is reduced to form water because it gains hydrogen atoms. So oxygen here gains hydrogen atoms and is reduced. The energy is used to form ATP. The oxidation of glucose to form ATP is done in a series of small steps to increase efficiency. And we'll talk about this more in the next chapter. So for photosynthesis, the sunlight's the ultimate source of energy, and carbohydrates are formed. Those carbohydrates are going to be used as well as the oxygen in mitochondria within the cells. Heat is always going to be a byproduct, but the big thing given off is ATP, so it's energy for your body to use. Humans are involved in the cycling of molecules between the chloroplast and the mitochondria. Our food is derived from the plants, or we eat animals that have, been, have eaten the plants, and that gets converted to ATP. This is a diagram showing you that. Happy people eating food. Your diet is not all glucose, of course, and anybody that deals with nutrition at all knows this. So we um, can also have carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which are the macromolecules that help us to sustain life and make up our bodies as well. Carbohydrates are glucose and different forms of glucose, fats, and then the proteins, of course, come from meat sources. So these are broken down into simpler molecules during digestion, and they can enter cellular respiration at different steps in the pathway. The whole process is making ATP. Anytime you have excess glucose, it can be used to form fatty acids. And you take fatty acids and glycerols, put them together, and you form lipids or fat. And the next chapter is going to show us how we take um, these different um, things that we take into our bodies, the carbs, fats, and proteins, and actually turn them into ATP for our body to use as energy.